Ron Harper. Ron Harper with the Cleveland Cavaliers sprained his hand slightly just a night or two ago, but says he does not think it will bother him in the competition today. He's 6'6". Well, Ron Harper is very creative, and I think that he has an excellent chance here. He's got a good imagination, good athletic ability. Uh, he has had a tremendous start this season, could have actually made the All-Star team. And from the Philadelphia 76ers, a rookie. This man is 6'9", Shelton Jones from St. John. Well, of course, this is a young man who has a great deal of athletic ability, a good leaper, and... He's really kind of an unknown, uh, watching him a little bit in the warm-ups. It'll be interesting to see what he's able to come up with in his first competition. And uh, somebody who my sidekick Steve Jones is very familiar with from the Portland Trail Blazers, Jerome Kersey. Well, Jerome Kersey is one of those power dunkers, and the, the handicap for Jerome is the size of his hands. Probably, along with Spud Webb, the smallest hands in the competition. Uh, so we'll see if he can hang on to the ball. If he can, he certainly has a shot. He's Rick Barry's choice. And a first-round choice of the New Jersey Nets from Auburn University, Chris Morris. And one interesting stat about Chris is he led Auburn when he played there in, in dunks. They keep record of it at Auburn University and in three-point shots. Well, Chris Morris, again, another one, another one of those uh, outstanding uh, leaping, with the outstanding leaping ability, the good athletic ability. You can see him taking it home there on one of his dunks. Uh, the creativity aspect will be interesting from him. And another first-round draft choice of the Phoenix Suns last year from Temple, Tim Perry. Tim is 6'9", 23 years old. Well, Tim Perry's looking for a chance to spring the stardom, and this may be it. He was really great at Temple a year ago, hasn't had much playing time. He has great leaping ability. Now it'll be a question of how much showmanship he can bring to the dance this afternoon. And from the New York Knicks, a power dunker, and, and uh, among the uh, new entrants, Kenny Walker could certainly uh, put on a display today, and, and he's really performing with somewhat of a handicap. His father passed away recently. He had to leave a Knicks game to attend to that personal tragic business but he is back here competing today and we certainly give our condolences to him but you can see very athletic and he i watch him in warm-ups uh, i wouldn't count him out he's very creative has legs flying he may impress the judges and at 5-7 when he stretched out spud webb a former champion well i watch Spud. he seems to be at least back on his timing in the warm-ups he was bouncing the ball at the right height catching it and knocking it down so you know if he gets a good start he's gonna pull everybody with him We'll see how it goes for the little guy today. And you're going to hear a big round of applause now for the former member of Fly, Fly Slamma Jamma, the Houston Cougars, Clyde Drexler. Well, of course, when you have the hometown going for you, it doesn't hurt. The Spud had it going for him in Dallas, Michael Jordan last year in Chicago, and certainly one of the most gifted and athletic participants in the competition today, Clyde the Clyde Drexler. And if he can come up with uh, something... A little bit more creative, perhaps, than he did last year. He has a chance to pull this one off. Clyde well, Drexler, his fifth slam dunk appearance. He's 6'7", which is a nice height for a performer here because it gives him an opportunity to have the appearance, certainly, of hanging in the air. Well, Clyde has some tremendous power on his dunks, and what uh, the, the missing ingredient that you talked about, Rick, would be that showmanship, that flair. Wilkins spreads his legs and brings the ball down from deep. Michael Jordan hangs his tongue out and kicks his leg out all at the same time. And we haven't seen any of these players acquire that extra quality that makes that dunk look a little bit more special because they all are high wire acts. There are some of the all-stars who are in town for the competition. They'll be watching and uh, making their own comments from the sideline. Dominique Wilkins among them. And Larry Nansa, who was hopeful of uh, participating, but also sidelined by an injury, and Shelton Jones will be the first out of the box. And uh, it, it will be interesting to see how he responds to the crowd and being in the situation for the first time, Rick. I'm sure that he's got the adrenaline flowing. And, uh, you know, he's got nothing to lose. It's a nice opportunity, some good exposure for him. I mean, here's a guy who uh, wasn't even in the league, and now he's made it with the 76ers, and I'm sure he's just delighted to be here. Remember, two dunks in the first round. A competitor may choose, if he misses or doesn't feel good to, about a dunk, to replace one of them. There are five judges. They can be ranked on a total of 0 to 10. And a nice first effort by the youngster, Shelton Jones. A little Statue of Liberty 360. Well, that was. It was impressive, and that's the way to get out of the box. And again, also, one of the things we'll have to remember is 
they have to hang on to the ball and get the dunk done. Shelton Jones was trying to decide what he was going to do, and then he did. Yes! I like that. And yep. looked over his shoulder on the way. Well, I'll tell you, some tough fans here see a lot of sevens and eights <laughs> throwing it up there. You get another look at it. Look, you see him take off from about the inside of the circle there. Look at it. Look at the beautiful grace. Is that a ballet Elder move or Jones what? That's a great dunk. That is. And, uh, you know, I think perhaps they took a little bit off because he is a big guy, 6'9", so maybe it doesn't seem to have that degree uh, of difficulty. Just, and Shelton Jones with a 44.1. Remember, a change in the scoring from a previous competition as they have been broken down the scores from 0 to 10 on percentage point basis to hopefully eliminate ties and to decrease the disparity in the distance between some of the scores. 44.1. Now let's see if Jerome comes up with some creativity here. From Portland, Jerome Kersey. Behind the back. Two-handed jam. Well, a little two-hand over the head, but again, not real creative. That's the one aspect of his dunk that I really felt that he would have been working on a little bit for the competition. He certainly has the power and the great athletic ability and jumping ability, but his creativity leaves something to be desired. As we watch him come in again, just straight into the basket. Good, strong jump goes up takes it brings it up two hands over the head nothing special about that I would think that should be lo scored lower than Shelton Jones's well, dunk as we take another look from a different angle the, now, uh, in, in, in the case that you talked about it that would be an exaggerated pump by a Dominic Wilkins that would make that seem like it was a tremendous power jam what was the score for 44.9 for Jerome Kersey who went to little Longwood College in Farmville Virginia and that was better than Shelton Jones who had a 44.1 and our next competitor now from New Jersey, here is Chris Morris, a rookie from Auburn University. Well, we'll take Rick out of the judge's seat already. <laughs> They've nailed him. And Morris, uh, with not a heck of a lot of flair, as he sailed underneath the hoop to jam on a reverse. <laughs> the natives, as Rick said, are restless and brutal. As you look around, all you see are sevens and eights. But the last time that happened, the player came out with a good score. But I think some of the players are a bit nervous. They want to make sure that they get their first one down, and they'll try something more difficult. But again, as we take a nice, long, slow Chris look Morris. at it, Chris 41. Morris did a fine dunk. And Morris gets a 44.1, which ties him with Shelton Jones. Percy still with the best score of 44.9. Our next competitor will be Ron Harper from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Ron Harper had to miss last year's competition due to an ankle injury. He is an exciting player, and he's a perfect height to win this, same as same height as Michael Jordan at 6'6", from Cleveland, Ron Harper. And he misses the dunk. Remember, a player may choose to replace one dunk per round, two dunks here in the first round. You see, that is the danger of going Harper heavy early. If you don't get it done, you're now under the pressure, so he's got to come back with something good this time to stay in the hunt. Don Harper talking to some of his colleagues who are sitting courtside. And there as he spins on a 360 for the jam, Ron Harper. Well, I was stopped. That's the same dunk he did. He had the courage to come back and repeat it. Well, I, I admire that, certainly. And it was a very nice dunk. I think it would be right up there with, uh, with Shelton Jones. I think Jerome Kersey got a bit of a break on his dunk. I still like Shelton's dunk. Let's take a look at it in slow motion, which certainly gives you a better perspective on it. There he comes with a good takeoff. Started his turn a little early. Swings back down and throws it through. A very nice dunk on the part of uh, And Harper. Ron Harper gets a 41.7 to put him currently in second place behind the 44.9 of Jerome Kersey. The top four scores will advance to the second round. Did you say 41.7 for Ron Harper? 41.7, and as a matter of fact, that does put him in second place. Now, all of a sudden, Clyde Drexler, who grew up here in Houston with the high school in Houston, gets a lot of tens waved from the crowd. <laughs> One nine. Well, you know, that's all I know, but Kurt, uh, you see down in the corner, Clyde started with a tremendous power jam. We'll watch it again. Clyde coming in from the left side. Good strong take up. You see, he gets it the legs up in the air, gives it the big windmill effect, and throws it through. And that's the type of stuff that the judges like and the crowd likes. It's just a little bit of that extra flair. And that'll put Clyde Drexler in first place, 46.6 on his first dunk. So it'll be Drexler, Kersey, and Jones in that order right now. Harper is in fourth place. The top four will advance. There are eight competitors in this first round. And another rookie from Temple playing at Phoenix, Tim Perry. 
Well, Tim Perry's a high flyer. Now we'll see how much creativity he has, and this is what he's mulling over right here. He's going to start. Looks like almost from a standing start from the free throw line, a catch and jam. With two hands, Tim Perry, who is 6'9", got high above the rim. But once again, in in just the first look at that, it's not as impressive as if somebody who's 6'3 or 6'5 does the same thing. We'll watch him again as uh, he's just going to throw it up against the glass. Now, if he had caught it and done a 360 and thrown it in, now I might have been a little more impressed. But look at the height he had there. His head was up by the rim. See the reaction of some of the players watching. A 44.4 for Tim Perry. And that will place Perry now in third place as he slides in between Kersey and Jones. So it's Drexler, Kersey, Perry, and Jones. The top four scores will advance to the second round. And here's a former champion, 5'7", Spud Webb from Atlanta. Oh! The best of the day in my view. Well, so far, as a little man, because of his size, just I mean, he gets so high off the ground, it just looks so spectacular because it's like he's going up forever. We'll watch him again as he comes in. He's going to do a little turnaround over the head dunk. There's the step, the two foot plant. Now he goes up. He's already turning. Look, he's up, 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 still going, still going, still going, and he throws it through. And I'll he tell dropped you what. it between the legs before he took it back up with both hands. All of the showmanship and the degree of difficulty is there on the Spud Web jam, and let's see how close to the front that pushes him. It puts him all the way to the front. A 46.8 for Spud Webb. Certainly so Spud the best. Spud Webb and then Drexler. The best dunk he's done in two years. Last year, he didn't come close to having a dunk like that. Uh, last year, I think he was still still really trying to get well off of that knee. And here is Kenny Skywalker out of the University of Kentucky. And now with the New York Knicks, he is a real power dunker. The top four, as we go into the Walker dunk, are Spud, Drexler, Kersey, and Perry. And that's power. That is power. You know, and a lot of times fans cannot appreciate the power and authority. And again, he would have needed a little bit more exaggeration to bring the oohs and ahs as the fans put up eights and ten. And that's the final dunk of that uh, first group of eight. Now see how he didn't bring it down, down far exactly, enough. You know, Steve, he I... had it, and he just brought it about shoulder height and then threw it back in. Uh, again, if we use Wilkins as an example, that would have been all the way down by his knee. A 42.5 for Kenny Shelton Walker. Jones. Now, that was the first of two dunks here in the first round. They will combine the scores in this round to decide which four will advance to the semifinals. We start at the top once again. Shelton Jones from St. John's. He had a 44.1 on his first attempt. Well, let's see. He was the first out of the box, and the judging has increased a little bit. Let's see if he benefits from some improved uh, leniency by the judges to go with this 44.1. I like that one. Cradled it in his arm as he turned underneath the hoop. Shelton Jones, the rookie. There are the judges. Dr. J on the right with the glasses. The judges don't take very long, and Shelton Jones did not take long either. The little rock, and then he goes by, and and again, you can see that now Tim Perry liked it. Let's see how much the crowd and the judges liked it. And here is the score on his second dunk, a 45.4. And that will add up to 89.5. Remember, it's cumulative of the two dunks in this first round. So 89.5 after Shelton Jones has completed his first two dunks in the first round. And now, Jerome Kersey. I don't think he wanted to do it with the left hand, Steve. <laughs> he made a bad toss that time, but he gets a chance Number to replace eight. it. Yes, yes. It got away from him, and again, that, that is a problem for a dunker with small hands, and uh, he is going to have to come back with something a little bit more safe. That was impressive, and I think the viewers will be able to see what he did with the ball above his upper body there while he was in the air. That's one of the things that's tough for the judge to see in real time, however. And we'll take a look at Jerome Kersey going in again. Again, this is his second opportunity. He's doing an over one. But again, he didn't bring it down. He didn't have the flare. He throws it through. And uh, I'm a little disappointed in Jerome because he really hasn't become as creative as I thought he might have this year. Well, I think he, he's got it in his mind. But again, he's handicapped by the size of his hand. So he's always worried about making sure that he gets a dunk in. And if he doesn't, and you see his score, 83-9. Or 88-9. 88.9. And... 
Remember, Shelton Jones had an 89.5, and the top four will advance. We're adding up the two scores from each of the first two dunks. So Jerome Kersey was, was edged out by Shelton Jones even after two. Here's Chris Morris from the Nets. Tried to come in from the left, swing it under the hoop, and jam it from the right. Missed it. He'll get a chance to replace. Well, it was some uncertainty on his dunk when he started in, and that got him in trouble right from the beginning, and now he's got to come back. To better the first two, he needs a 48.5. Will that get him as no. high as a 48.5? I no. don't think you, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think it will. The judges have been tough today, but uh, let's face it, so far, with the exception of uh, Spud Webb, we haven't really seen a spectacular dunk so far. Well, I think we've seen some spectacular ones, but that also may tell us since they've got four or five of those judges over there that are basketball players, they're not going to let anyone get away with too much in the past. We've had some other people that may be influenced judges a little bit Chris more. Morris, so Chris Morris gets a 42.1, and that adds up to an 83.2, which would put him right now in third place after the first three competitors. And Ron Harper. He can be very exciting. Let's see if he will be. He had a 41.7 on his first, and he had to replace a dunk. Remember, he does not have a replacement remaining. Well, you know, his dunk was just as difficult the second time, and I'm surprised that his score was so low, but maybe because it was the second time, the judges were influenced. He's got to come back strong. Oh, that's pretty strong. Off the glass, opposite side of the rim, and the one-hand jam. And that had to be perfect, because as Steve pointed out, if he blows that one, he's in big trouble. And he had a perfect bounce, and the timing was beautiful. Watch again, the hard bounce. Now, and look at him have to chase it. That's going very fast, and he's right up there. Perfect timing, crashes it through. That was an excellent dunk. Should be the highest score so far in the competition. He needs a 47.8 to move into first place at the moment. Look at that super slow-mo. Let's look at the beautiful timing. He's still up there going up higher, had time to cradle a little bit and throw it through. Great dunk. And Ron Harper gets a 46.8, which gives him 88.5, and that places him after the first four competitors third. I thought he might get a little more on that dunk. Now Clyde Drexler, his first dunk, 46.6. And he misses, but does have a replacement dunk coming. And that wouldn't have gotten a big score either. That wasn't very creative. And I'm surprised that the Clyde didn't try to do something a little bit more spectacular. But now he's got to be careful, but yet still come up with a good dunk. Yeah, he's got to have some numbers on this. He had the 46. He comes back with the same one. And see how the judges do the second time around. For Harper, the judges were not kind. Let's see if they treat Drexler any better. Even the crowd a little tough there. He saw an eight from his hometown crowd for Clyde Drexler. He gets a... Well, he's got to get at least a 42 to advance as we take a look now. It, as his head goes by, a, a nice dunk by Clyde Drexler, and we'll see what the crowd thinks. Ron Harper gives you a little sly grip. And, and that'll put him in first place with a 47.1 on his second dunk to go with his 46.6 for a total of 93.7, and Drexler is now leading the competition. I'm sorry, I have to speak up. That's the highest score they've given so far, and it was nowhere, nowhere near being the best dunk of the competition. Didn't even come close to Harper's. You're going to be like Oscar about those officials. They got a, ooh, Tim Perry flew. One of the first oohs of the day from my man Steve Jones. That says it for first place. For Perry to move into first place, he'd have to get a 49.3. Now, Bob Neal, you see what I'm telling you? Competitors never quit. Rick has always been hard on officials. He's hard on the judges today. Oscar's hard on them. As we take a look at Tim Perry, let's see where he takes off from. Just inside the free throw line. And he reached it, reached out, stretched out, looked pretty good on that one. Coming right at you, there's the stretch now. He reaches out and throws it through. Nice looking dunk by Perry. He's 6'9", by the way. Tim Perry gets 45.0 on that dunk. For an 89.4, that puts him into second place, uh, third place as we're in the competition right now. As we are in this competition, it's Drexler, Jones, Perry, and Kersey, and Spud Webb. for Spud Webb and so far the two best dunks of the day have come from the little man from Atlanta the little man is back this is going to be real tough on the hometown crowd because again we're talking about a guy that is smaller than all of his competitors and it's got his creativity and his timing back he puts everything on this one 360 and nails it but see the difference is we watch in super slow-mo coming up again it's a terrific dunk it's a spectacular dunk for a man of his size 
But again, if you were to see this exact same dunk, there's the kick of the legs, which helped a lot. That exact same dunk done by some of these other competitors, I guarantee you the score would not be as high. And Spud Webb gets a 47.7. That's the highest score of the day as the judges are stingy in 1989, but that'll move Webb into first place ahead of Drexler. It's Webb, Drexler, Jones, Perry right now as we go into the Kenny Walker second dunk of the day. And there's the flare. Now that was power and flare. Again, here's a guy. He got his legs kicking out, the 360. Now had he not kicked the legs out and done a little bit of that flare, he would not have gotten this same reaction. We'll watch it again as Kenny Walker goes in, gets some congratulations. Brad Doherty over there doing it. Runs in very strong. Now he's up to 360. The kick out of the legs, the little fly in the throw through. Another look at this one coming in here now. That's an outstanding dunk. Look at the legs kicking. Now let's watch it in super slow-mo to watch the acrobatic ability of Kenny Walker as he goes in and plants. Going for the 360. The kick out with the legs. The other leg following. The pump and the throw through with power. And he gets a 48.8, the highest dunk of the day. Now that was it. I mean, he really had some authority. And the thing that makes that tough is the 360 and the pump going away. And he drove it home and shows you the power that he has. He lived and up to his name that time, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and that means it's Webb, Drexler, Walker, and Jones will be back for round two right after this. From the summit in Houston, Texas, along with Rick Berry and Steve Jones, this is Bob Neal. We're advancing now to round two in the semifinals of the 1989 Slam Dunk Competition. And this is the order of competition. Drexler, Jones, Walker, and Webb. Our first dunker in the semifinals. Well, you know, this puts the pressure on the hometown guy, Clyde Drexler. He's got to come out of the box with something sensational and, and, and put some heat on the rest of the competitors. And, of course, if he gets a big score here from the judges who have been leaning in his favor, it could stand him well. Drexler, remember, this is not cumulative. That was nice. Clyde Drexler. On his first, there are two dunks in the semifinals also, then three dunks in the championship round. What makes this look good, I think, Steve, is the fact that he goes the opposite way. He's going to spin with his right shoulder going back towards the inside. That's not the normal strength way to go when you're a right-hander, and it puts a tough angle on, but he takes it off very strong. Didn't quite get it through without catching the rim, as you can see, and gets a 47.3, I believe, on that as he comes back in again with another look at it. Uh, didn't quite get the elevation I think that he would have liked to be able to throw it through stronger. Clyde Drexler with a 47.3. That's his highest score of the day. Remember the scores from the first round do not advance. Starts all over again and they'll combine the two scores from the two dunks in this round to advance the top two to the championship. The second one, rookie Shelton Jones from St. John's. And as these players are moving along, they're heating up just a little bit. Sheldon Jones holds his hands out and looks over to some of the other NBA players on the sidelines saying, what do I got to do? There was no crowd reaction at all. Well, you know, again, sometimes they have a little problem trying to figure out what they will do as they advance, and Sheldon Jones with a little concern, and he cranked that one up, and perhaps to help himself out, he could have perhaps got a little Sheldon bit more Jones joy. You can see his head is up there by the rim as he floats by. A 45.7 for Sheldon Jones. Jones. Well, the judges are loosening up here a little bit anyway. So, uh, and I think, again, when we talk about it, you've got four former players over there. They're going to be a little bit tougher on these dunkers. The judges, in case you dialed in late, are Nate Archibald, Julia Serving, Bobby Jones, Earl Monroe, and football player Warren Moon. Kenny Walker. I see, again, Kenny with the legs flying, a little pump, the power going through there. At that is so critical because it brings the oohs and ahs from the crowd, which I think has a psychological effect on those judges when they write those numbers down. We'll watch him come in again as he comes in from the right side. The good jumping ability, of course, that Kenny Walker has. There he goes up. Now there's the big pump back down the leg spread eagle and throws it back through. Let's look at the slam cam and take a look at it from up there. You can see Kenny Walker doing a nice number, 46.9. That moves him into second place behind Drexler in this first dunk of the semifinal round. Well, Spud has been perfect so far tonight. Everything that he has tried, has his timing has been good. The one that he likes to do is to throw the ball on the ground and then catch it and dunk it with two hands. Here it comes. 
but many misses. Remember, there are two dunks in this semifinal round, and each competitor may elect to replace one dunk. So if he replaces this one, which he has to, that means in the second dunk of this round, he'll have only one chance. Now, this is a pressure for Spud because he has got to be perfect. He's trying the same one. And he got it. Well, I tell you, that's guts. Look at Dominique Wilk at his teammate giving him the, the 10 side, 5-5. Five and five. I tell you what, to do that after missing the first one and to be able to pull it off, I admire that. I really do. Well, watch again. Spud Webb, the long, high toss. He's got to watch it carefully. Time has jumped. Be able to go up as strong as he can. Catch it and throw it through with two hands. Boy, Spud's back on it. Here's another look at it again. There's the perfect timing on the bounce. Spud up, hits it, and through for Spud Webb. And the slam cam angle, we'll get him to see him as the final comes up. You see it hits the rim, kicks off. He still is able to time it and throw it through. And that's the best score of the first dunk in this semifinal round, 47.8. Hey, the other Spud Webb. The players who are over there, they know how tough it is to, to do that. That takes incredible timing. We talk about Wilkins Dominique. watching on the sideline. And Larry Nance, a former champion. You see, Nick, he loves it. And back, Cliff Levingston, his other teammate in the back, giving the two, two five signals. Hometown favorite, Clyde Drexler. Missing. On his second attempt. Along with Rick Barry and Steve Jones, this is Bob Neal from the Summit in Houston, Texas. We're in the semifinal round of the 1989 Slam Dunk Championship. Clyde Drexler. With the windmill. Well, the first windmill was more dramatic and certainly more powerful, and he blasted it off the back of the rim, and so he came back with the same one. We'll see how the judges do, but you'll see Clyde come in, and his concern now is to get it in. He cranks it up and drives it home. You'll see the slam cam come in. This is like driving a nail. He just takes That's the hammer and chops it on top. And one-tenth of a point behind Spud Webb on his second dunk. Drexler's That's second. 47.7. Well, that should get him into the final at 95 for a total. No 50s yet. We had seen several at this point last year, or at least a few. And now Shelton Jones for his second dunk of the semifinal round. And Shelton Jones missing. He'll have an opportunity for the replacement. And that's got to be tough, a little embarrassing to... Uh, Hit the uh, deck after the dunk. Rim, one, Jones, zero. Well, you know, again, I think he's sensing a little bit of the pressure of having been in this for the first time. And so really the telling point will be if he's going to have enough courage to come back and really try something dramatic this time. That was pretty dramatic. Had his head right beneath the rim. I'm not sure what kind of score that will draw from these very tough judges today. Shelton Jones would need a 49.3 to move into first place in the semifinals. Well, we'll watch the super slow-mo as uh, he comes right at us on this play. You can see the great elevation that he's going to achieve. However, there's not a whole lot of creativity. He's probably worried about missing the dunk. There he takes off. Watch his head right into the net. He has to duck it so he doesn't hit, catch the rim and throws it through. I wish I could do that. I thought it was terrific from my standpoint, but it won't get a big score. Not a big score. A 44.9 for Shelton Jones and his total for two dunks in the semifinal round, 90.6. I think Kenny Walker realizes that he's got to go ahead and do some more flair stuff because the crowd's reacted to it in his last two dunks. He's come through with them. And if he uh, comes up with it here, he's got a good shot at going into the finals. Walker needs a 48.1 for first place. Oh, brother. That brought up the guys. Look at the, look at the sideline over there. All the players, the other players, all up giving them high fives. That brought them to their feet. And the fans as well. And Kenny Skywalker living up to his nickname. And it's going to be in Could we have our first 50? But he has had the highest scores tonight, and it's the power and the drama. Look at the pirouette and the top and throw. And almost 49.5 for Skywalker. Well, that is a beautiful. Look at the pirouette. The arm is out. He's cocked back. I mean, that is a spectacular dunk, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody that's watching. Here is his reaction, given the little Mark Jackson finger action. Well, I guarantee it. Here they come over. <laughs> 
Mark Jackson congratulating him. What a dunk. That, I guarantee you, if there was ever a 50, that was a 50. He that, nailed that. One. There that was no Walker question about first place. that. Now the new guys are arriving, but here's a former champion from 86 in Dallas, Bud Webb. And I don't know after his more spectacular previous dunks and following Kenny Walker, how the judges will react to that. Spud Webb needs a 42.9 to move into first place. He well, may very that, well get that. That is the key. Following the spectacular power jam that Walker put down, this looks a little ordinary, even for the little man. And you see another look. It's still a spectacular effort as he well, cocks and drops it over his head. 44. He gets a 44 as we take another look. Notice the height for Spud Webb. Hey, he's got to get the height, <laughs> otherwise he can't <laughs> dunk it, fellas. With 95 points so Spud record. Webb does not advance with his total of 91.8. It will be Kenny Walker and Clyde Drexler as Walker's spectacular move bumps Spud Webb. He will not advance. It is Clyde Drexler and Kenny Walker. They will come to the middle of the court now for a coin toss to determine who will go first in the championship round. Well, I'll tell you right now, Steve, Bob, if I had to pick a winner right now and they didn't go to this next round, I mean, Kenny Walker, far and away, has been superior to Clyde Drexler. Clyde is going to have to come up with a lot more to be able to pull this off. Coin toss at the center of the court to determine who will go first. Drexler and Kenny Walker. Clyde Drexler won the toss. He has elected to And no we'll be back for the championship round of the 1989 Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship right after this. And we're back as you see Moses Malone, Derek Harper, Michael Adams looking on from the sideline, Patrick Ewing, and over here at the TBS table along with Rick Barry and Steve Jones, it's Bob Neal. And we are now down to the piece de resistance of All-Star Saturday. The Legends game has taken place, the long-distance shootout, and now we're down to what most of the folks come to see, and that's the one-on-one -on -one duel for the championship of the slam dunk, and it is Kenny Walker and Clyde Drexler. Skywalker will go first. You see Walker, Steve, over there talking with Dominique, who was giving him some pointers as to what he should come up with. Patrick Huey talked to him. Everybody seemed to be giving him do the double clutches, give some pump fakes. <laughs> he's got more information than he ever wants. Well, he's got his own catalog, and he's got the momentum going after a slow start. He is built. Let's see what he comes up with this time. Kenny Walker, two-hand 360. And his teammate Patrick Ewing jumped to his feet on the sideline, but Ewing's a little bit prejudiced, I would say. Remember, in this round, each competitor gets three dunks and may replace one. Now, on this dunk that Kenny Walker came up with, he did the good double clutch move again. He's got those legs flying out there. Look, at there's the spin move. Brings it down. Now up the legs spinning, twirling, and throws it through with authority. And that's what's so impressive about Kenny Walker. As we watch from another angle here, a little bit higher. Here is the run in. Now he hits... The takeoff, the beautiful spin. There's the leg spinning, pulling him around, and he throws it through again with that great authority. A very impressive debut for Kenny Walker here at the slam dunk. It'll be a challenge for the other competitor, Clyde Drexler, a 48.9 on the first dunk. Today, we have yet to have a 50 score, and usually there are several. Remember, this year we have gone to the decimal system, and that is definitely, I think, reducing the numbers of tens that are being handed out by the judges. Well, we're going to see what happens as Drexler takes a little time to count it off. He may go back to the end of the runway and do the dunk that Dr. J made famous and Michael Jordan refined. As we take a look at all of the players, the crowd is going to respond to this, and we'll see just how high the glide can fly today. Sellout crowd at the Summit in Houston. Clyde Drexler versus Kenny Walker for the 1989 Slam Dunk Championship. Well, I'll tell you this, he certainly should get some points for the ball <laughs> bouncing off the rim higher than any I've seen. Of course, <laughs> he'll replace that dunk. But this really puts the pressure on Drexler because remember, there are three dunks in this round and the player may elect to replace only one dunk. Well, we're watching him again. Now, I, th I don't know why he dribbled the ball so much. Now he starts to finally run and get his momentum one step inside, had the knees up, just didn't quite have 
enough elevation, perhaps a, a, an inch difference. Kenny Walker had a 48.9 on his first dunk. Walker out of nowhere to really and for all this crowd today. Here's Drexler. Well, he's going to run now. And he lost the ball. And that was the key. He wasn't able to hang on to the ball either time. And that really put the pressure. Going second probably may have been the mistake for Clyde this time. Remember, on a miss, the judges may award up to five points per dunk. So it's not a complete zero. Well, we know one thing. The judges won't have to decide <laughs> because Kenny Walker put all of the heat on. He built the momentum from that first dunk to this round. He's in a great position right here. The only thing going to hurt him is if he misses. And a 24.5 for Clyde Drexler. From the summit in Houston, Texas, ready for the second dunk of the championship round of the 1989 slam dunk competition. Kenny Skywalker out of Kentucky via the New York Knicks. going to be hard to beat Kenny Walker. He can taste the money and the trophy already. You know, fellas, I wouldn't be surprised if Kenny was dedicating this competition to, to his dad who uh, just passed away. I mean, that probably would be the type of thing that he would do. He's that type of an individual, and he's certainly responded here. We'll watch him again as he comes through. He's going to give it the cup. He'll get the momentum going. The drive as he plants the two and the big 360 pulls it out. This is the whirling dervish move with the legs flying, the arms going. Another look at it coming in. Watch the plant. There's the cup. Look at how he's just flying. Everything's going way out. The little spin, the pirouette, the legs up in the air. Now the big windmill throw through with power and the legs still flying as Patrick Ewing gives him the big cheer for a great dunk on the part of Kenny Walker. Who got a 49.6. That's about as good a score as these judges may hand out today we still have not had a 50 and Walker now at 98.5 but there are three dunks here is Drexler well he's almost he's certainly a lot now as Clyde misses right there he, he missed a lot down the stretch but it, I, I think again it was just the power and the consistency of Walker from the first round right on through he got better everyone else fell off a little bit and Clyde didn't get any of his best up home in the final round and so Clyde Drexler will get a score, something under a five, because he missed both of the dunks in his first opportunity after he replaced one. This one he does not get the miss, and he gets 25, as everybody gave him a five for that one. But Kenny Walker has locked this up. But now, let's see if he puts on an exhibition for his late father and for the crowd in Houston, Texas, Kenny Walker for his third and final dunk on his way to the 1989 Slam Dunk Championship. Oh, yes. Well, that's, a, that's impressive because he can run him by the basket underneath with a lot of speed. And the timing has to be perfect because he doesn't have those large hands. He cupped it and still was able to reach back and throw it through. Well, you see Kenny Walker, who is our winner, the only one to start in the corner today and to come up from the underneath side of the basket, look at the head, get it out of the way, and then he drives it home. And the thing that's been so impressive about Walker, the hands, the leg, the showmanship that we talked about, the total package, plus the power, he drives it home. And there's no question who is the top dog here at the summit. And Kenny Walker with a 148.1 wins the championship to join the likes of Nance, Wilkins, Webb, and Jordan. Kenny Walker, the new slam dunk champion of the NBA with a spectacular performance today.